Two moms on vacation in the Bahamas on a carnival cruise. They say they take a day trip and it led to them being drugged and raped. Listen. Our cruise line did not make us aware of a travel advisory. We had no idea what was going on in the Bahamas. This was the drink. You had one drink. It was this drink. And what happened so, after you had it? We kind of decided at this point, we want to get out of the ocean. We're feeling it a little bit. We're going to look for seashells for our kids. The man who raped me, he was the one that directed us as to where to go. To with, find the shells. To find the shells. I woke up. I came to in the process of my rape. The man who raped me, the lady, the lifeguard, I think her name was Coletta, said that the man who raped me hadn't even been working there an entire week. Now, the cruise line and the resort are pushing back. News Nation's Laura Engel has been following the case and the latest. How so, Laura? Hey, Chris. Well, yeah, there's these new questions tonight about these allegations uh, coming from this resort, the Pine Cove Excursions, uh, which is basically the company that runs and operates this beach area where the alleged assault occurred, saying that their timestamps on their surveillance footage doesn't match what the women claim. Now, that could come from a variety of reasons um, and memories. We'll have to wait and see because nobody has got their hands on that surveillance tape. Uh, we also want to bring you the Bahama officials uh, tonight are pushing back against this level two advi travel advisory, saying that they feel that the Bahamas are completely safe um, and they want visitors to still come. So they're pushing back on the U.S. State Department's travel advisory. We do want to read you a statement that came to us from Carnival Cruise Lines over this matter that reads, while ashore in Freeport, Bahamas, on an independent shore excursion, two guests on Carnival Elation reported to Bahamian police that they were sexually assaulted at a local beach. Our onboard care team provided support to the two guests as they sailed back to Jacksonville. Bahamian police are investigating the matter and Carnival is providing our full cooperation. Now, we also had heard uh, with the police that the FBI was involved. I called my contacts with the FBI. They say they are completely aware of the situation, but the police in the Bahamas are the ones that are taking the lead on this. Meanwhile, we've got a statement that came from the Pine Cove Resort today. What's really interesting, Chris, about all of this is that they say that the time codes don't match up but they also say that they looked at the surveillance video and because of that, they have fired the two men that have been arrested. Um, and they gave a statement mm. to many news agencies today saying that the um, that management indicates that at a minimum, they violated their zero tolerance policy. So still a lot of questions here with this case as we continue to follow up and try to get through to the Pine Cove. We've tried several times today, but can't get them direct. Yeah. Chris. Smells like CYA, but we'll see where it leads. Laura, nobody's better than you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, let's get perspective uh, from Nick Gerson, who is a counsel for the two women and understands the industry very well. Thank you for coming back on the show. Timestamp doesn't line up. Uh, conflicts in the stories. Uh, this is corporate speak for go slow. These women may not be telling the truth. What's your response? I can't have any response without seeing the information that all these different entities are claiming, uh, telling us generally that the timestamps don't match without providing any proof of what the video reveals would be impossible for me to make any assumption. Um, there's no reason for us to think anything other than that my clients are telling the 100% truth. And the fact that Carnival has actually come out and made a statement to suggest that my clients voluntarily went ashore and somehow independently identified this excursion when it was being marketed on their website, when they were actually taken away from the ship on a shuttle with other Carnival passengers is nonsense. The only reason they knew There's about this was because they were Go told ahead. about it. The only reason they knew about this excursion was because they were told about it on Carnival's website and on by Carnival crew members. So the suggestion that, hey, look, you know, you decided to do what you wanted to do, but you can't put that on us. We're just the cruise. What you do on shore is your business. You're saying that doesn't apply. Passengers rely on the cruise lines to investigate and to ensure that the places they visit and the ports of call are safe. And by promoting and endorsing excursions like Pirate Cove, they're essentially warranting the safety for their passengers. 
And if there was a specific warning by the United States Embassy or the State Department that there was a specific risk of harm, rape, sexual assault, murders, the law requires Carnival to follow those warnings. The general law that applies, they have an obligation or a legal duty to act with reasonable care under the circumstances. And included with the legal duty includes a duty to warn. So what we would want to know before we were to take the position that Carnival is responsible, what measures, what additional measures were undertaken by them to warn their passengers about what the State Department was telling them. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.